<laughs> oh, buddy, I'm in trouble now. Before I go, I want to share this story with you because it's important to this point. I want your community to know that one of the coolest people I ever met was a transgender woman. And this is not a man that I knew that became a woman. This woman was trans when I met her. Lived in San Francisco. Daphne Dwarman is her name. I would do 18 shows in the Bay Area, sometimes in Oakland, and Dirty Hood nightclub, and she would be there, a white trans woman, laughing loud and hard at everything I said, especially the trans jokes. It's very puzzling. <laughs> because she was obviously trans. And one night after one of the shows, I met her. And what it was, turns out, it was her dream to be a comedian. And I was her hero. It's very moving. I could not dislike somebody that felt that way about me. We became fast friends. And when I made that special Sticks and Stones, right as it was coming out, I happened to be in San Francisco and I wanted to do a show, but I needed an opening act. And I remembered that trans woman I had met. So I called her on the phone. And, and I called her myself. I said, hey, Daphne, this is Dave Chappelle. She couldn't believe it. And I go, I'm in San Francisco. And then she started saying a bunch of wild stuff. I was like, relax, I don't want any pussy. I was, um... <laughs> I was calling because I'm doing a show and I, I need an opening act. And I was wondering if you'd open the show. And she was like, fuck yeah. Now, I didn't know this at the time, but, but this woman had only done stand-up comedy eight times in her life. This is little to no experience. And now she's about to open a show for, for what many call the GOAT. <laughs> she's an amateur in stature, but in practice, she was very professional. She showed up early, which is something I appreciate because I like people to be on time. She was dressed to the motherfucking nines. I mean, I'm transphobic, and even I was like, you look nice. <laughs> Went up on the stage with all the swag of a professional comedian, grabbed that mic and walked right down the middle and looked at the crowd like a gangster. Man, you should have seen her work. This bitch bombed for 45 minutes straight. <laughs> And I am not exaggerating, young man. That show was terrible. <laughs> Stunk. Stunk. And then she brings me on and, you know, you know, I was like a glass of water after a handful of salt. The crowd was happy to see me. I was killing it. But here's what impressed me. Any other comedian I've ever seen, if they had bombed as bad as she did, would have snuck out of the back of the theater and went home and cried or something. And she didn't do that. Not only did she not leave, she found a seat right up in front. You know, when a new comedian watches an experienced comedian in comedy, we call this taking class. And this bitch took my whole class. She sat up there and was laughing as hard as she always laughs, as if nothing bad had even happened to her. And I saw her show. Something bad happened to her. <laughs> she was drunk. So she starts talking to me while I'm on stage. But the way a person would talk to a television when they were alone, she's talking to me like that. That didn't bother me because I knew her. But the crowd didn't like that shit at all because she sucked. <laughs> and a guy in the back of the room stood up. And Daphne's hair was dyed blonde at the time, and the guy screamed out, and his energy felt wild as fuck. He said, hey, Daphne! And everybody kind of clamped, like got tense. We didn't know if it was a heckler or an active shooter. And he said, he said, does the carpet match the drapes? Yeah, it was fucked up. The whole crowd kind of groaned, because it was so, like, mean. Everybody groaned, except for Daphne. She kind of laughed, which was weird. And then she didn't even look all the way back. She said, sir, I don't have carpets. I have hardwood floors. Just like that. Just like that. 
And boy, when she said that shit, it blew the roof off the place. <laughs> Cut through all the tension with that one joke she made up for 45 minutes of a stinker of a show. <laughs> and after that, she could do no wrong. And I kept on rocking. She kept on talking to me. And then the show became something cooler than a show. It became like a conversation between a black man and a white trans woman, and we started getting to the bomber shit. All them questions that you think about that you'd be afraid to ask, I was just asking them, and she was answering them, and her answers were funny as shit. The crowd was falling out of the chairs. And, and, and at the end of the show, I go, oh, Daphne? I said, well, that was fun. I go, I go, I love you to death, but I, I have no fucking idea what you're talking about. The whole crowd laughed, except for Daphne. Now she looks at me like I'm not her friend anymore. Like I'm something bigger than me. Like I'm the whole world and the guy. And she said, I don't need you to understand me. I said, what? She said, I just need you to believe. Just like this, she goes, that I'm having a human experience. And when she said it, the whole crowd kind of gasped. And I gave her the Fight Club look. <laughs> I said, I believe you, bitch because she didn't say anything about pronouns. She didn't say anything about me being in trouble. She said, just believe I'm a person and I'm going through it. You know, I believe you because it takes one to know one. Then I told the crowd good night, and they start going crazy. And before the applause gets to its crescendo, I say, and don't forget my opening act, Daphne. And the crowd stood up. And I looked at her, and tears came out of her eyes. She couldn't believe it was happening. I couldn't believe it was happening, because her show stunk. <laughs> and it was a great night. I remember the late, great Paul Mooney was there, a bunch of fly-ass comedy niggas was there. And we all went backstage and was just drinking and talking shit and laughing, and Daphne stole the room. She had everyone cracking up, spinning the yarn, telling us all these crazy stories about shit she'd be into. We all laughing real hard, and as she's telling us, and everyone's laughing, I'm looking around, I'm like, oh my God, she is funny. I pulled her aside, and I said, you are hilarious. I didn't know that when you were on stage. I said, you're doing some things wrong, but I can help you. I said, anytime I'm in San Francisco, why don't you open the show for me and I'll just try to give you some pointers, see if you can't work this thing out. And she said, are you serious? I was like, yeah. And she grabbed me real tight, hugged me, squeezed me. And, and I pushed her off violently because I'm transphobic. <laughs> I said, boundaries, bitch. When Sticks and Stones came out, a lot of people in the trans community were furious with me, and apparently they dragged me on Twitter. I don't give a fuck, because Twitter's not a real place. <laughs> and the hardest thing for a person to do is go against their tribe if they disagree with their tribe, but Daphne did that for me. She wrote a tweet that was very beautiful, and what she said was, and it's almost exactly what she said, she said, punching down on someone requires you to think less of them. And I know him, and he doesn't. He doesn't punch up, he doesn't punch down, he punches lines, and he's a master at his craft. That's what she said. Beautiful tweet beautiful friend. It took a lot of heart to defend me like that. And when she did that, the trans community dragged that bitch all over Twitter. <laughs> For days, they was going in on her, and she was holding her own because she's funny. But six days after that wonderful night I described to you, my friend Daphne killed herself. Oh, yeah. It's a true story. My heart was broken. Yeah, it wasn't the jokes. I don't know if it was them dragging her. I don't know what's going on in her life, but I bet dragging her didn't help. I was very angry at them. I was very angry at her. 
I felt like Daphne lied to me. She always says she identified as a woman. And then one day she goes up to the roof of a building and jumps off and kills herself. Clearly. Only a man would do some gangster shit like that. <laughs> Hear me out. As hard as it is to hear a joke like that, I'm telling you right now, Daphne would have loved that joke. That's why she was my friend. I was reading her obituary, and I found out she was survived by a daughter. Uh, and the moment I found that out, and this is true, Anderson Cooper from CNN texted me. And all he said was very nice. He said, I'm sorry to hear about your friend. And, and I texted him right back, uh, new phone, who this? <laughs> he said, it's Anderson Cooper. I said, oh, I said, Anderson. I go, look, I need to find her family. And, and he texted me right back with all the phone numbers and all this information. I say this to say, if you ever want to know about anything gay, call Anderson Cooper from CNN. <laughs> This nigga is faster than Google. <laughs> and what I did is I got in touch with the family and I started a trust fund for her daughter because I know that's all she ever really cared about. <laughs> and I don't know what the trans community did for her, but I don't care because I feel like she wasn't their tribe. She was mine. She was a comedian in her soul. Her daughter is very young, but I hope to be alive when she turns 21, because I'm going to give her this money myself. And by then, by then, I'll be ready to have the conversation that I'm not ready to have today. But I'll tell that little girl, young lady, I knew your father. And he was a wonderful woman. <laughs> Empathy is not gay. Empathy is not black. Empathy is bisexual. <laughs> it must go both ways. It must go both ways. Remember, taking a man's livelihood is akin to killing him. I'm begging you, please do not abort the baby. <laughs> Kevin Hart dreamt his entire life of hosting the Oscars, and when he finally got the job, they just took it. It's not fair. They didn't kill him. Kevin's a strong guy. But I'm sure it broke old Clifford's heart. <laughs> it's over. LBGTQ, LMNOPQIZ, it is over. <laughs> I am not telling another joke about you until we are both sure that we are laughing together. I'm telling you, this is done. I'm done talking about it. All I ask from your community, with all humility, will you please stop punching down on my people? Thank you very much, and good night. Yo, Taylor, I I'm really happy for you. I'm gonna let you finish. But Controversy Radio. I had one of the best videos of all time. One of the best videos of all time. Hi guys, thank you so much for joining us for this video. I'm your girl, Salisha from Controversy Radio. Unfortunately though, Jesse couldn't make it for this video, so. Uh, I'm right here. Pipe down over there. Anyway guys, back to the video. If you liked it, please be sure to like and subscribe. And if you're one of those who didn't like it so much, well, you should like it and subscribe anyway because there'll be a lot more for you not to like. Thanks for watching, peace.